Hi, AP Lit students. It's wonderful to see you again. Um, this is your Monday video with a Think Loud that's going to help you with writing your body paragraphs for the rest of the week. For this video and for these lessons, the goal is that you will be able to create a thesis um, and analytical body paragraphs for the AP Lit prompts um, by deconstructing the prompt, selecting evidence, and creating a high quality outline that's going to assist your writing. This Think Loud that I'm doing is coming from Repent Harlequin. So it's a prompt you've already seen and it's from a short story that everybody should know. In this prompt, it has the context sentence, which is already highlighted in pink. And then the, the little question is the one that asks about literary technique. And the big question is the one that asks about characterization. At this point, I'm gonna ask you to pause me and go to the assignment that's in the AP classroom and actually uh, find your big question and little question for your own prompt. So give me a pause and go do that. Okay, so once you've finished highlighting what your big question and your little question are, your next step is to actually go and read the passage and look for things that are going to help you characterize the character, the Harlequin, and things that are literary devices that are helping you do that. Um, and as you do that, do that, you highlight the evidence, um, you annotate the evidence so that you can see what your thinking process is. And your last step is to decide what adjectives you're going to give to the character and what names, what name the techniques that you think you found. So for me, I found that the Harlequin was harmless and he was appreciated by the citizens around him. And the techniques was that there was a contrast in like the expectations. There was a, some positive diction that the Harlequin was described with, and there was a lot of imagery of like the sort of comical things he was doing in the passage. The step after that is once you've decided what your adjectives and your techniques are, is to create a thesis. And this is something that remains one of the most important cornerstones for your writing. Um, so this activity is a quick CFU. There's two theses here, and I want you to tell me or decide for yourself which thesis is the higher quality thesis. Take a second to think about it. To make this a little easier, I went and I copy pasted the plugin fill in the blank thesis from the one pager here. So you can see that in order for a thesis to fulfill the requirements, it should have a title and the name, title and name, and it should have at least two devices or techniques named, and then it also has to present an opinion. And only one of these does all of those techniques. This is not a complete thesis because all it does is it says that there is a strong impression of the character. This is a complete thesis. So thesis two is the thesis that you want to do where at the end you've made sure that you actually have your big question interpretation. What the, the Harlequin is as a character in the thesis. Um, and this like relates to Coil and to any other big question that we do later on. And once you have a thesis, the cool part about this is that you've already helped yourself determine what your claims for your body paragraphs are. So you've got a harmless rule breaker appreciated by citizens. You've got contrasts, diction, and imagery. And these things are going to break apart into your body paragraphs. So here is an example of what your very first initial outline should look like, where you've chosen one claim or one opinion and a device that is associated with that opinion for your first body paragraph and then what your secondary point and secondary devices for your next body paragraph and the goal now is to find and plug in the evidence that most strongly supports that claim so you can see that i chose the imagery to be my first body paragraph simply because it's larger evidence and so i wanted to get it out of the way first um, so I didn't feel like I was struggling to write a large body paragraph at the end. And then the ones with diction is usually smaller pieces of evidence with very specific words. Um, and so I can just say that this word meant a certain thing and it's a lot easier to wrap that up at the end. Once you've decided what your claims are, you decide what your evidence is. So I've got one imagery with the spider webs and then I've got another imagery with authorities hanging unseemly. Body paragraph two, I already know what evidence I want to use there as well, that the Harlequin laughed and apologized after committing a crime and that people who are usually very serious <clears throat> and solemn roared with laughter and accepted his apologies. And this is a huge contrast in the normal expectation. And then there's the uh, strong diction of saying that he was a very merry person and that the citizens around him enjoyed his activities, which supports my 
claim that he's appreciated by the citizens around him. So I've got four pieces of high quality evidence, two for each claim. Moving on from that, the next step is what's highlighted in yellow is these are going to become my analytical sentences. I've literally just said why I think that the evidence I picked is good evidence or why I think the evidence supports my initial claim. The Harlequin is a harmless rule breaker. Um, well, pr first off, this imagery shows that he's trying to be arrested, proves he's a rule breaker. Um, instead of hurting or attacking the authorities, he used their own methods against them into their own spider webs. And then there's also just a funny cartoon image of him blowing a horn and frightening them into a spider web creates a sense of comedy, which shows that he's harmless. And so that's three sentences um, of analysis that support my one sentence of evidence. And then again, one sentence, the authorities hung there in an unseemly fashion, showing that they're not hurt and therefore that the Harlequin is harmless and unseemly highlights that they're being embarrassed instead of hurt. And so each of these is a sentence, like once I pull this out, it'll end up being a sentence of analysis. And so you can already see that I have every sentence that I need for my whole essay here in this document. Um, and one of the cool things about getting to type this is now all I have to do as I write is say, this proves that the authorities are trying to arrest the Harlequin. And I've got a period of analysis or of, or of explanation. The Harlequin responds by using the authorities' own methods against them, showing he's not violent and he's not being an aggressor. And I don't even have to rewrite my outline. My outline becomes a strong body paragraph. Here is a clearer example of a whole uh, evidence chunk that's been pulled out into an analysis chunk. Um, so you can see how each of those little bullet points turned into the base of a sentence of analysis. And this has become almost a complete body paragraph. And then I just need to reinforce my point with one or two more sentences and maybe a zoom out to the author is trying to show that the Harlequin is the good guy in the situation or the good guy against the authorities which leads into my next body paragraph of him being appreciated by the citizens and favored over police officers. And this allows for a flow of thought using an outline and it reduces the amount of work that you have to do because you're not having to repeat the same thoughts over and over again. The cool part about being able to do this typed is it's easy to spell check yourself. It's easy to make sure your sentences are complete. And at the end, you just have to control C your essay into the AP classroom and you're done. Your independent practice for today is to go into the AP classroom. There's a new prompt waiting for you. It's the 2003 Mulvaney prompt. You deconstruct the prompt, which you should have already done. You craft a thesis uh, based off of your deconstruction um, and the devices that you find and create an outline for two body paragraphs. Um, create the outline to show what your analysis was going to be as well. Um, to increase the rigor of your work or to produce high quality work, create an outline and create an entire body paragraph so that you can start seeing the jump from an outline to a full body paragraph. And your assignment by the end of this week is not going to be to turn into an outline, it's gonna to be to turn in a complete body paragraph um, that meets the AP requirements. If you have any questions, please make sure you contact me. Um, I'm free for office hours. And I'm also available by email, or you can just leave a comment on the work. Looking forward to reading your submissions, guys. Stay safe.